And good evening, gang. Yes, it's late night tonight. It's Wednesday, the 9th of August 2017. A warm welcome along to tonight's uh, United Kingdom talk. Coming to you, as always, live from the Mirable studio in Royal Berkshire. I've got this. Uh, this isn't a new jacket, incidentally. I'm looking at looking a bit strange colour today. <laughs> I think it's just I've got it even browner than it was last week. Uh, yes. Now, this isn't new. I just want to point that out. It's not a new jacket. This is one that I don't wear very often. Not that popular. But you know what? When you spend money on clothes, you need to wear them, whether people like them or not. Blooming cheek. Anyway, it's been a, quite a nice day. Um, we didn't see too much of the sun today, but um, I left the house. Last night was good. Uh, I, so Monday night was very good at the karaoke. Some nice new uh, faces turning up there all the time, actually. We've got lots of new faces appearing at the karaoke nights, um, which is always nice to have new people, as well as, of course, you know, the, uh, uh, the regulars. Uh, Ray Reynolds yesterday bought me in yet another gift. Look, people buy me gifts, aren't they kind? Look, look at this. Now, he's already bought me in. Now, where have I put those? Just a moment, please. Oh, what have I done with those? Oh, there they are. No he's already... One minute. Oh, God, blimey. He's, I think he's collecting me the entire collection. I've already got the Blue Peter 13th Annual, the Blue Peter 9th Book, the Blue Peter 6th Book, and we're going backwards, boys and girls, because now... Ray Reynolds has brought me in the Blue Peter fourth book. And I didn't even have this one. I think he's getting these off eBay or, a, or perhaps a, a, a charity type shop. And it's just a just a glance back to my childhood, really, because we never used to miss Blue Peter or anything like that. Um, and there's the I, one of those is Petra. I can't remember the cat's name there. Someone did tell me the other day. Um, anyone remember the cat's name? It's a really old Blue Peter. And there's another dog there as well, similar to Petra, so I don't know who that is. Uh, but again, uh, another wonderful little read and a, uh, a, a thing back into my past. There's the great John Noakes with the parrot. Isn't that great? I mean, and this is, this must be 1960... 1967, 1968. When's it, where would it have a date on it? Usually in the front, wouldn't it? Wait a minute. There's the old TV. Look at that old TV studio. Look how old that is now. Look how old that looks. Great big hot lights on the ceiling. They're all LEDs now. They, they're not hot anymore, I don't think. The lights in television studios. Uh, the one, the ones in here, I've got... Um, uh, the big curly things they are, actually. They're, they're like the old... I, I say old. But they are old-fashioned now. They're the old-fashioned energy saving bulbs but very large you wouldn't find one of these in like Sainsbury's own base the what I've got got two of those in here and at some point I'll replace those with LEDs and what have you uh 1968 there we go 1968 look and you could someone someone's address in there I better not show that I? so it's obviously someone else's book but it was a blue peter competition would you like to meet Val John and the rest of the blue peter team yes please would you like to see all the animals? Would you like to come to London and have tea with them all? This is your chance. How many words can you find in Blue Peter? Val and John managed to spot 25. Can you do better? And you get the first prize is an invitation to an exciting Blue Peter party. Da -da 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 -da. So thank you again, Ray Reynolds, for yet another Blue Peter annual, which I shall uh, enjoy while sitting downstairs at uh, some point. Uh, that's ever so kind of you, Ray. It really is, my darling. Let's say hello to some early people before I start chatting about myself today. Uh, good morning to Jamie Clark. Morning, Jamie. Well, since I saw you on there, greetings. It's always nice doing a, doing a show at a different time. And that's the beauty of not not scheduling this at like 10 o'clock every morning or something like that. Most of the shows are, are in the morning at some point between sort of 10, usually between 9 and sort of 11.30, something like that. It starts and goes on for about an hour. Now and again, I throw in a late one and it's nice to um, see some different people there as well. Uh, Craig Lawless. Greetings, Craig. Greetings. Uh, Deirdre is there. Hello, Deirdre. Greetings, Deirdre. Paris is there, the lovely Paris. As your mum, Sharon. S -s Send Sharon my love. Claire Norton's there. Rod Brown. Hello, Rod. Uh, young Chris. Duke Chris. Greetings, Duke. Are you having a rough time at the moment? Been seeing some little Facebook messages uh, on your thing. Look like you're having a, a, a fed up time at the moment. Not, you know, I, I don't know. Are you fed up, darling? Are you fed up? Is it because you don't see me enough? Is that That's probably what it is. That's probably what it is, Chris. I mean, you can always move in here if you want to. 
You know, it's no problem. Just let me know. Bring your case, my love. Uh, hello to Lee, who says, a great night with Connor singing at Central Station. Yes, uh, Connor, good morning, Lee, um, is one of the bar staff at Central Station, and he's got an awful lot of talent. Him and his other half, Alex, uh, who's, who's kind of... Um, I'm looking at these two. Connor's the one with the talent for doing the singing and the entertaining. And the other half, Alex, seems to be doing management. And that that's quite a good match. That's a very good match if you can get something like that. That's similar to Barry Manilow in his other half, isn't it? Because Barry does all the entertaining. He leaves all the management to his other half. That, that can work extremely well. I mean, it really can. Anyway, Connor, who works behind the bar, as I say, at Central Station, he's, he's sung a couple of songs on like, the karaoke occasionally because he plays guitar as well. Very well, indeed. Very well. And he's got a lovely voice, nice personality on the stage. And uh, he did his own show there tonight, which Lee has just uh, been to, and he said it went very well. So I'm very pleased about that. Very, very pleased about that. Perhaps there's some video that uh, uh, we can watch a bit later as well, would there be? Has anyone take? Someone must have taken a video, so I'll upload that onto the... Um, uh, onto the Connor wall, and we could all have a look at that, and I'll share that. Hello to Lou O'Keel, says, hello there, Chris. I loved Blue Peter and Magpie. Yes, Magpie. Magpie. Now, one of the people in Magpie, oh, God, what was his name? It's gone out of my head. Frizzy Air. Not Mick Robertson. No, not him. Oh, gosh. What was his name? Anyway, I worked with him for a while at Play Radio. This is uh, about... About five or about four or five years ago now, maybe a bit longer, maybe about five or six years ago now. I, I worked with him at Play Radio. It was a lovely chap to work for, really full of encouragement and all that, you know. So nice, nice people, Magpie. Um, not Mick Robertson. What was his name now? Gosh, I can't. How stupid! I can't remember. He used to be on Talk Sport as well, and I think he was on LBC. He'd done loads of stuff. Nice man. Morning to Gustav. Morning, Gustav. Uh, Lily's there. Hello, Lily. I haven't seen you for a while. Why haven't you been to my karaoke, Lily? We need you, dear. We need. We don't want. We need. We need you there, dear. Um, Duke's waiting for me to take you to dinner. Oh, what would you like, darling? Five guys? Oh, I can't eat anything at the moment. I'm on dust, Duke. You know that. I've been to Slim as well today. News of that coming shortly. Hello to Ro Ro Roden. Roden, greetings from Doha, Qatar. Wow, you're away today. Is the internet far? Is is it fast enough there? Is it able to keep up with my constant wittering on? I do hope it is, sir. Paul Adamson, greetings uh, from Wimbledon. Hello, Paul. It's a while ago in Amsterdam at the moment. Uh, well, please don't go to bed yet. We can't afford to lose viewers, dear. Not on air. <laughs> I've only got 10 million watching as it is. God's sake, we're desperate. Things are desperate here. Hello to Mark uh, Cording. I've got some more uh, spider plants. Actually, I've got, uh, I've, I have just made a few more spider plants. So I'll give you two for your mum next time I see you. Next, let me know when you're coming down. Anyone else want a spider plant? I've got a few more have suddenly come into my grasp. We're giving away spider plants at the moment. So that's very kind of me, isn't it? Hello to SOS um, Gregorian. Gregorian. Now, what's that? Info dude. I'll have a little look at that later. I can't look at it at the moment. Balance, dear. That's about £200 for a meal, that is, isn't it, in balance? You must have... Have you gone mad, dear? Two hundred Balance? I'm not going to no puffy restaurant, love. Oh, no. You want to go somewhere? Toby Carvery. That's it. £6 for a meal. <laughs> go. I've had my hair cut this morning. Can you see? I left the house this morning, went around my hair cut. I thought I'd better get there early because my Slimmer's World is at 11.30. So I thought, well, I'll get my hair cut in earlier this time. Ah, oh, Roden says, of course, Wi-Fi is superb. I'm clear and very energising. You're not going to bed already, are you, Chris? Come on. You can't sleep yet. I haven't told you about my day yet. How rude. <laughs> Uh, so I left the house early to have my hair cut, bearing in mind that last time, last time I went, I had to wait half an hour. Well, of course, as luck would have it, I drove uh, to Wokingham, which is where the Slimmer's World is, and haircut, and my church where I go to. And uh, I park in the church car park. You see, if you remember, you can park in the church car park. Otherwise, you've got to pay in a car park. Not me. Thank you very much, Father David. Thank you very much. So I parked in the church car, uh, 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 church car park. 
walked into Wokingham Town Centre, which is about five minutes walk. It's not far at all. Uh, got into the hairdressers and I'm, I, I, I'm just about to sit down and the girl calls me over. Not my usual hair cutter. Was another girl who's cut it um, uh, before. So she called me to a chair, which was not one of the chairs on. It was on the other side of the wall. And I thought, oh, that's a bit odd. So I sat down there. And then one of the fellas says, it's all right, sir. We'll look after you. If you sit down there, we'll call you when you're ready. At which point I thought, oh, right. Um, are you not cutting it? Well, we'll look after you. And so <laughs> I went to sit back down. I said, doesn't she cut hair? Yes. Oh, well, she's cut mine before. Oh, OK. Well, if you want to go and sit. So it's a bit like musical chairs going. Didn't know where to sit down or anything. And then make out your own blooming minds. Anyway, so she cut me hair. But she doesn't do the burning eel hair thing. You know, they got this flame. It's like a it's like a, a, a metal cotton wool bud. And they put a bit of cotton wool around the edge. And then they spray it with something. And then light it. And it's like a flame. And they go. And it burns all the little layers out your ears. Now. I did try and do this with my mate once <laughs> because we couldn't get down to that hairdresser. So we went somewhere else and they didn't do the flame. So he said, how are we going to do this? I said, well, I've got matches. So I got I lit one match and I went like that. Well, of course, when I flicked it like that, the thing went out straight away. I said, well, maybe if I try a few. So I got four matches and shook them like that. I go. Well, I nearly burnt his ear off. I think I held it there a bit too long. And I could, I could smell burning. It was air. It says, set light to the side of his head. So we're not very good at that. Anyway, so she cut me air. Uh, didn't speak much English, which, to be honest, suits me. I can't be sitting there having me air cut by a girl or a boy. It doesn't matter what. And then, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, chatting all the time. If I wanted someone to chat all the time to me, I'd put one of my own shows on and sit there and watch it. You know, I just want to just cut me air and keep your mouth shut. OK, the occasional word's all right. How are you, sir? That's all right. What would you like, sir? Uh, 0.5 all over. OK, sir, thank you. Do, you. do you want straight or tapered? Straight, please. Thank you very much. And that's it. You don't need to talk to me anymore. All that inane chatter. <laughs> All the time. Ronnie was at another... My mate was at another hairdresser a few weeks ago. And he was... It was a bloke cutting his hair and that was all fine. But there was a girl cutting someone else's hair. Oh, my God. She went on and on and on. She would... I, and I had to leave the hairdressers in, in the end. I, I got out of the hairdresser and walked across the road and set another cup of tea in Waitrose. I couldn't bear listening to her. And she was loud. Loud. You don't need that while you're having your hair cut, do you? Oh, my word. So uh, that was that. I came out of there um, and it was far too early to go down to the um, uh, Slimmer's World. It was now about 11 o'clock. Well, the Slimmer's World I go to doesn't start till 11.30. So I went down to um, WH Smith's again in Wokenham because the, the whole area there is is having a little bit of, bit, a bit of building work going on at the moment. So you've got part. It's only a small place, Wokingham, right? So I've gone to down to W. H. Smith because I need a new diary for 2018, and I can't find one out yet. I don't, I'll, I'll probably actually, when if, now that I think about it, I could probably order one off Amazon, something like that. But certainly in W. H. Smiths they didn't have one. They had midterm diaries, you know, 2017 to 2018. Well, I've got I've got the whole of 17 here on a calendar, dear. So I need one for 2018, not available yet, to take my advanced bookings. I like to be booked ahead so I know exactly where I am in my sad, lonely, pathetic life. Then, uh, as they didn't have one in there, so I thought, well, I'll buy a new book because I've just finished my book, as you saw on the show yesterday. I just finished reading my book, um, which was, have I got it here? <clears throat> I think it's still it. There it is. Life, Life in a Fishbowl, which is very good. Very good. It's like, it's not really, a, it's, it's, uh, I bought this from Waterstones and they told me it was a young person's book rather than an adult book. Some of the adult books, they're all full of sex and all that. I don't want to read about sex. I can put on a porn channel anytime I want and watch a film for nothing. Why would I want to read about it in a book? For God's sake, man. <laughs> I could put the telly on and watch my sister on Babe Station half the time, couldn't I? Huh? <laughs> So I had a look at the books in there and there was nothing I fancied. I didn't I didn't know what to look for, really. It's not very set out well, W.H. Smith's, is it? 
Have you noticed that? When's the last time you went in a WH Smith's? It's all over the place. Anyway, so I had a quick flick through. Oh, I don't fancy any of these, so I'll, I'll probably go down to Waterstones and um, choose another book. So from there, I went to Slimmer's World. I was still about 10 minutes early. So I'm sitting there and the girls are coming in. There's, there's, there's only like two or three fellas in there. The rest are all women in there. And uh, we have a great laugh in there, actually. There's a lady sitting next to me. Hello, how are you today? Yeah, have you weighed yourself? Oh, no, it's too early because we don't weigh until 11.30. So I'm talking to this, this lady. And um, all of a sudden, I've looked up. And there's this queue in front of the way. I said, where did that lot come from? They've come in while I was talking. I didn't even notice them come in. Never mind. Anyway, so I joined the queue for uh, checking in. So first of all, they, they take your card and you check in. They put it in a machine. Um, and then they give it back to you. And then you join the other queue for the weigh-in. And I weighed myself. And this week, thank you very much. Da, 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 da. I have lost one and a half pounds. Thank you very much. So in total, I uh, I started at 13 stone, 13 and a half pounds. I'm now 12 stone, 11 pounds. I think that's correct. So I'm doing quite well at the moment. It's going down a little bit at a time. Um, so I went back down and I sat next to, I sat where I sat and there was another lady sitting next to me. I said, hello, are you new this week? She said, oh, no, I usually come to the 930 um, Slimming World because there's four. Linda, who runs the whole Slimming World. Oh, I've got a picture of her. I haven't put it on the blooming thing yet, have I? Oh, I'm sorry. I've got a picture of me and Linda. Yes, Linda, head of Slimming World. I'll show it on the next show on Thursday, OK? I'll show it to you on Thursday. Um... But uh, she does four. There's like 9.30, 11.30, 5.30 and 7.30 at night. And the 9.30 one, I, I had to pop to that last week, although I didn't stay the whole thing. Uh, and it's massively busy. I mean, it's really busy. The queue for the, for the way in goes around and out the door. The 11.30 is, uh, is much, much quieter than that. And the lady sitting next to me, she said, she said, well, I couldn't make the 9.30 one this morning, so that's why I've come to this one. I have to say, you're all so much more friendly than they are at 9.30. That's what she said. Lady said to me, good, we're having a little bit of a chat. I can't remember what her name was now. But she was very nice, very nice indeed. Um, so uh, we did that, and then um, uh, Linda was announcing some awards we always have awards every week. You get like the people who have lost half, have, you know, have carried on losing weight and have lost half a stone or a stone or a stone and a half or two stone. I mean, do you want me to go on? Two and a half, three, three and a half. There's, I think the most someone's lost there is about five and a half stone. I kid you not. Five and a half stone. I've lost my stone and two and a half pounds in 10 weeks. And, um, Sometimes they have other awards, and one of the awards they had this week was Woman of the Year. Now, unfortunately, I'm not eligible for that one. But I think it, it doesn't just go on, on how much weight they've lost. It also goes on how perhaps they've helped other people or been particularly friendly or done this or done that. And there were four, like, nominations that had come through, and so, so she brought the people up, although one of them was off. She wasn't there. So the other three come up, well, would you like to just give us a little bit of a chat? And, and they did indeed. And um, I won't mention any names, <clears throat> but it's 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 it was it was interesting to hear um, the lives or or part of the lives that some of these um, people have had. And um, one lady, she had um, come along to to Slimming World uh, because she'd been diagnosed with uh, MS, you know, multiple sclerosis, which um, is a is a, a terrible disease, really. And I th I don't think you can get out of it once it's once it's got you. I think it's gradually deteriorating. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not a doctor. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm hundred percent on that. I think once you've got it, you can't get out of that. And um, you know, now she has a walking stick and she has trouble walking. But she wanted to do something, you know, because she thought, oh, well, you know, I want to do something. I want to. And she was big. She was a big girl. She had trouble walking and all this business. And she lost so much weight. And there's like pictures of before and after. 
Um, uh, and she's always very pleasant to me, this particular lady. She, oh, hello, Chris, how are you today? And, you know, she, she struggles. You watch her. She struggles a little bit where she walks. She's not that old, probably about 45-ish, I suppose, something like that. And she's got somewhere by by losing her weight, you see. And there was another lady there who was also... And uh, it turns out she um, uh, has a disabled son. And when she had the disabled son, her kind of world all turned upside down. And, you know, she, uh, every, she no longer thought about herself, ever. It was always about her... Her disabled son. That was her one priority, her disabled son. The thought of about thinking about herself was neither here nor there. So she was eating all the crap and all that and put on massive amounts of weight. And she joined the Slimmers World and um, uh, managed to to achieve something. And it was, it was, I was actually trying to hold the tears back, to be honest, listening to somebody's story. Do you know, I've got the minute she back suddenly. There's a, there's a flea gone into my back there. <laughs> Sorry. Um... Yeah, and it was really interesting hearing these people's stories and um, the trials and, and difficulties they have with their lives. I mean, I, I cannot imagine what it's like trying to build, you know, suddenly being told that you've got something like multiple sclerosis or having a child and finding out they're severely disabled and they will always need looking after. Now, this <clears throat> indeed touches my family as well. My nephew, uh, Gary, and uh, his wife, Stacy, uh, they have three children. They have um, uh, Evie, who's uh, the oldest girl. There's Harry, who's the little boy. And there's Olivia. And Olivia, too, is severely disabled. And she needs 24-hour care. And when I say 24-hour care, I mean it. Um, at night time, Stacy, my nephew's wife, has to sleep in her own little room with her. And several times throughout the night, an alarm will go off and she's got to get this uh, uh, sucking machine, which is like a straw, and she puts it in her mouth to, to suck out the, the phlegm, otherwise she'll just drown. You know, and, and it's quite unbelievable um, how these people survive. I don't don't know if I mean I've said to people I don't think I would be able to do something like that and they said you'd be surprised you know if it happened to you not you know not not if I was obviously I'm not born disabled but if if I was to have a child that was disabled you step up automatically you, you kind of don't even think about it but how or someone's life changes like that all of the sudden from being perfectly normal like probably most of you watching the show or listening to the show tonight or whenever you're watching the show you know from being perfectly normal and then suddenly bang your whole life is turned upside down in a split second and these people <clears throat> these people who look after other people or suddenly get a disease and carry on are much are much better people than me <clears throat> To have to give up everything to look after one person is the, the most important job possibly in the world. I mean, what do I do? Sit here, push a few buttons, turn a couple of lights on. The same at work, you know, turn on the computer, push a few buttons, chat a little bit, plug a few plugs in, turn the lights on and off and go home again. That's me. But people give up in and I've, I've heard so many over the years, so many over the years, and 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 children of parents whose parents get sick and they give up their jobs to look after their parents. Wow. And they get nothing for that, other than looking after their parents. And it it was just uh, fascinating to hear some of these um stories that we were. Um, listening to tonight. It, it really was. It really was interesting to hear that. Anyway, so that was my little thing at um, uh, Slimmer's World, a little bit different to what it was normally. And they had a taster session. Now, a taster session is where people bring in little, little bits of food and, that, and you all taste it. And it was all very, very nice. All very, very nice. Now, let me see. Let me have a look. Uh, 
do, 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 do. I, I tell you what they've got there. They've got a proper tea machine. Now, this particular Slimmer's work can be held anywhere. This one is held in a Salvation Army um, place. And they've got a proper tea machine there. Not one of these flimsy things where you push the button and a bit of hot water comes out. Oh, no. This machine is boiling the water. And you know it's boiling the water <coughs> because whenever you get your cup, you put your tea bag in and you pull this little handle when it comes out. And then you stop it. And then the machine itself sounds like it's about to explode. Knocking and banging away it is where you can hear the water is boiling in the machine. That's a proper tea machine. Not the touch. that I mean, I even have to say the tea machine in Waitrose leaves a lot to be desired as well. That's one of those things that's kind of on a table and people go and help themselves to tea. Well, it's all right with coffee because you don't need boiling water for coffee, do you? It's the tea you need the boiling water for. I'm telling you now, it don't. that is not boiling coming out of that Waitrose tea machine. It is in the Waitrose cafe. You get, you get a cup of tea in there. But the self-service cup that you put under the thing, put, and the water, it comes out. It's steaming. But there's no, it's not boiling. Certainly not boiling. This is a proper tea machine. As it's bubbling away in there. <laughs> so I had a cup of tea in that, and then uh, I came home. I had some lunch. I had uh, some... What did I have for lunch today? I had two eggs... Uh, tin of baked beans and a packet of onions. I, I quite like that. It's one of my favourite meals, that is. And then I went to home base. I had to get some glue because my mate... Is, oh, shall I just do some uh, messages coming in there? Let's let's just do some messages coming in there, boys and girls. Uh, Paris is not going to sleep. He's staying up. She's staying up just for me. Thank you ever so much. I appreciate it, Paris. And Paul is going to put me on the iPhone next to you in bed so I can have you on my pillow. Take your head off my pillow. La, 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 la. Now, what's that song? Tears on my pillow, thinking about you. <laughs> oh dear. Claire says hi again. I still have had not one of your spider plants. My sister Lucille has now got me one. Claire, well, you're always welcome to pop into somewhere for one of my spider plants, darling. You absolutely are. Hello to Anthony. Hello, Anthony. Uh, if any of these youngsters watching, please do not play with matches like your Uncle Chris does. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone want any hair cutting? My niece is a hairdresser. <clears throat> she's got her own business. She um uh she's had it about a year now. She she was she hired a chair in a hairdresser's, and then she took a loan out to hire the whole shop, and she took the shop over. So she's she's got her own business. My niece, I'm very proud of my nieces and nephews. They've all done really well. And you know the stories. I've told you the stories so many times. My older nephew, he he buys stuff, fixes it and sells it on. Yep. Buys, he buys something dirt cheap. A couple of quid for a lawnmower and he sell that on for 80, 90, 100 pounds when it's all fixed up and working nicely. My other nephew, he's got a car repair business. He fixes the dents and resprays them all. Yeah. Oh, I'm very proud of them. Very proud of them all. Uh, Paris says, can you give me some advice on how to lose weight without going to the gym as I am poor? Yes, yeah, stop eating, love. <laughs> stop eating. Well, you could go to Slimmer's World for eight weeks, cost you about five pound a week, Paris. And then you'd know what to do. It's not hard. You're never hungry. I'm sitting here not hungry. I had a lovely meal tonight. I've done my, um, one of my favourite meals, spaghetti arabata. Arabietta, Arabata, I can't remember, I can never say it properly. And I do put a lot of chilli in it, I warn you that now. God, it blows your head off when you eat that. <laughs> took, took us about 45 minutes, and I've got I've got today's meal, I've got about one, two, I think I've got about four or five meals out, because I do a lot at a time. I've got a great big stock pot, so instead of doing one meal, I'll put enough in for four meals. Oh, it's delicious. I wish you were closer, I could invite people round to sample my delights. Of food, that is. Well, anything else you want, really. Anything, I'm not fussy. <laughs> what the hell's that? <laughs> what the hell was that? Did you hear that? I don't know what that is. That is very strange. What is that coming from? Hang on, is it that? Oh, it was that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. I think that... <laughs> I think there was a, 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 a video playing automatically there. Yes, so um, I don't go to the gym, Paris. I go swimming. But Linda says, Linda says, you, could, you lose the weight through the change in the food. It's not the exercise. If you was to just change what you eat and how you cook it, you will lose weight. If you just exercise, you won't lose weight. <clears throat> Interesting. One thing Linda said today, you know, sometimes you go and weigh yourself and you might have put a little bit on. Or you might have only lost half a pound. And I never thought about it like this, right? So half a pound, anyone can lose half a pound of weight. It's honestly, you can. Anyone can lose half a pound of weight. But you know when you've stuck to the diet or the plan, whatever it is, <clears throat> and you go and waste, oh, I've only lost half a pound this week. And like Linda says, she says, so you've lost half a pound in a week. If you did that for a year, that's two stone. See? And I never thought about it like that. If you lost half a pound, just half a pound a week, you would lose two stone in a year. That is something, isn't it? Hey, eh? There you go. Um, Roden says, Faith binds them well on God watching over them. May God help and bless those people who have similar situations. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. It's a wonderful, wonderful people who can who can look after other people like that. Paris says they survive because they are praised with special people who helps them and loves them. No matter what, then people will always try to help and succeed. Roldan says I admire those people who choose to be strong than giving up. That's fantastic. They're fantastic. Fantastic. Paris does her exercise on the Wii. Oh, you know, I bought a Wii years and years ago. Uh, my sister had one. And I'd gone up there at Christmas time and I thought, oh, what a fantastic thing is this Wii. And we, we stood there with, with table tennis bats and pretending to play cricket and stuff like that. I thought, that's great. Do you know, I ordered one and I got it and some games. <clears throat> it came out of the box twice. I used it twice and put it away. I'm not a computer game person at all, Paris. I'm really not. In fact, funnily enough, I picked, pulled out a story here from uh, today's Daily Mail. Because computer games really do not interest me at all. I mean, they don't. I, I find them incredibly boring and difficult to play as well. The last computer game I really took seriously was Pac-Man. It, and in, in, the, in the paper this morning, it says worried parents have long warned youngsters that too much computer game playing can rot the brain. And now it seems they were right. Frequent players have been found to have less grey matter, says scientists. Unless, of course, you're dead. In which case, you're all grey, aren't you? Apparently, you do go grey when you're dead. First of all, you go grey, then you go black. Did you know that? Yes. Frequent players, uh, there we go. Action games such as Call of Duty, which which my younger nephew loves. I think both of them play it, actually. Call of Duty and Grand Theft Auto have been found to deplete a key memory centre in the brain called the hippocampus. No hippos at Slimmer's World, my loves. We are not hippos there. Regular players lose grey matter from this region which could put them at greater risk of Alzheimer's disease, depression and schizophrenia. The problem, neuroscientists believe, is that players do not use spatial awareness to navigate through a war zone or city. You see, I don't know what all this is, war zones and cities. Um, <coughs> oh, it's in a computer game, isn't it? I see. Yes. Uh, instead, they follow the game's built-in GPS using a different part of the brain to find the way on autopilot. This is the chordate nucleus, which acts as a computer, as a counterbalance to the hippocampus. Using it too much is, blues, is believed to shrink the memory center, which is vital to, to brain health. So there you go. Stop playing those silly computer games. Very, very bad. <clears throat> I've always thought, you know, to just sit there... Pushing buttons. When we was children, we was out on bikes and 
running, playing football over over Wimbledon Common and all that round there when we were children. It was so much fun. It really was. Uh, Paris enjoys Grand Theft Auto. I've tried that. I can't keep the car on the track. <laughs> I can't. It's so difficult playing computer games, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> I haven't got the Wii anymore. I gave that away to, um, I think we found a children's home, actually, and I gave it away to a children's home. If I chuck stuff out, I usually try and find someone that, that I take it, you know, for nothing, rather than just chucking it away, you know, if if someone can help someone else, and then uh, I'm pleased to do that. Lee says swimming is the best overall cardiovascular exercise. Losing weight slowly is better than losing it quickly. Oh, yes, I totally agree, Lee. Yeah, I go swimming most mornings, actually. I do about 60 lengths uh, in the swimming pool. And, and I, I can do it without getting, you know, I don't get tired. I don't get to 60 and I'm kind <sighs> no, it's completely normal because I'm used to that now. Really, I should change what I do now <clears throat> or change something. Carry on with the swimming, but I to swim less and do a different stroke or, or do something different because I think you get used to to, to doing the same swim all the time, you know. Paris says, I will teach you if you come around. I'm not interested in computer games, Paris. I've just no interest in them at all. I'm hoping that by coming here and chatting to you almost every day of the week now, you know, for a while, it will stave off my dementia and Alzheimer's and I will actually know where I am. But it is getting harder by the minute, to be honest. I have no idea where I am at the moment. I know you're there, and I know I'm here. I'm not quite sure where we both are. It's very, very complex. It really is. Uh, good morning to Jerry Millen. Morning, Jerry. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, after I went to the... Um, oh, there's a phone number. If anyone wants to call in today, shall we open a phone number? There you go. Let me just... Hang on. That's up there, and... I have to turn it on here. There you go, phone line open now if you want to call in at any point. You don't have to call in. I'm quite happy to sit here chatting. Sometimes people like to call in, sometimes they don't. That's fine by me. 020-8144-3477 is my local London phone number. Or if you've got Skype, you're in another part of the world, you can Skype for free of charge. Skype name, United Kingdom Talk, or one word. Okay, so phone number up there, 020-8144-3477, or Skype in on United Kingdom Talk. All right? Um, so after my lunch, I went out to home base because I needed some glue. My mate has recently been to Cyprus and he always brings us uh, something back. And he's bought me, <coughs> on, on my wall at the front, front of the house, I have lots of ceramic things uh, that, like, pretty little things. There's, um... There's uh, there's bees there's a there's a bee I think there's a butterfly out there I've got ceramic tiles which I've bought I usually get them from Amazon put them on the wall out the front there and he's bought me these this time first of all I've got this <clears throat> which is a little snail now it does come with that hanging thing but usually what I'll do is get some glue I use no more nails they they, they got that stuff um, and you just put it around the outside and you literally push that on the wall, hold it for a while, and I'll probably put a little nail underneath it, you know, just to hold it up until it's set, and that, that'll go on the wall at the front, you see, together with all the other little bits and pieces, all sorts of things on that wall outside. Uh, but in particular, he bought me these, which are really nice. Now, the only thing is with these, now, these would be like sticking out of the wall. They're butterflies, look. Aren't they beautiful? I love stuff like this. Um, and what I would do there, you see, is, is put a bit of that no more nails there. Literally, a, a, a nail underneath. You would put the nail in first. <laughs> because you know what would happen. If you started doing that, you'd miss the nail, wouldn't you? And smash the thing to bits. And that would just go on the wall. The only thing is, it's it would be sticking out a bit. And I think that might be inviting trouble, really. You know, someone would see that. Oh, oh, let's break that off the wall. So I might put the... And do you know what, actually? How's that? Do you like that? Yeah. Do you like that or not? Because I've got two. Here's the other one. Now, this one, unfortunately, it broke on the way back. 
um, from Cyprus on the plane, apparently. So, uh, and it, I, I've glued it back together. You see, I put a bit of tape there and I've put some glue there, which now from here, you can't see it, can you? You can't see that repair. You can't see it. If I hold it closer, oh, you might not actually see it close. Can you? No, I don't even see it there either. Can, yeah, you can. You can just about see that now, can't you? See that? That's glue there. That's glue there. Really difficult to repair because of the shape. So you, you, you kind of glue and you, because of the shape, it was it, you couldn't hold it together and you couldn't tape it either. And I tried to peg and everything. So I've done the best I can. That's not a brilliant repair, but from a distance, it's all right. Do you fancy those up there? A couple of butterflies. How would that look? Let's have a look there. Hey, something like that. Yes? No? What do you reckon? Or shall I put them out, out the front? I'm so, they're very breakable, these. I'll put them on there for now. Do you like those? What do you reckon? Let me know. Paris says, I have butterflies on my wall, but they are stick-on. Mine are not very great. Yes, stick yours on the wall. So you reckon on the wall at the back there? Do you think so? I think that would be quite nice on there. Although I do like, you know, they're ceramic and I do feel they should be out the front. I don't, maybe, I don't think someone would break those, would they? Why would they want to break them? Oh, you know what people are like? Oh, let's see if we can get that off the wall. Ghastly people, dear. Lee says cycling is also very good. I broke my arm in three places three months ago. But um, excellent exercise. Right, OK. Well, I do do cycling as well. I do do cycling as well, actually. Um, I cycle to Wokingham. No, not today. I took the car out to Wokingham today because I thought it was going to pour down with rain, but it didn't. We didn't get the rain. I don't know if you've got any rain in London today. No rain here. Um, but usually I'll cycle into Wokingham. It's about 25 minutes there, 25 minutes back again, which isn't too bad, you know. So I went to a home base, as I say, bought a couple of bags of earth, then I popped into Waitrose. And... Um, just a few bits and pieces in there. Now, I did. I was going to bring something up to show you, but I've forgotten it now. Uh, I bought posh floor cleaner. I don't know why. It's eucalyptus. You'd only find this in Waitrose. I looked at the Flash. You know, they had Flash. Or they had Waitrose own brand, which was a pound a bowl to clean the floor. And I came across this green bottle of Ecova, E-C-O-V-E-R, floor cleaner, eucalyptus and... It might be lemon or jasmine. Anyway, I thought, well, I'll just have a little smell of this. And I opened the bottle. Oh, this, it was beautiful smell. And it wasn't like floor cleaning. It was like a syrup stuff. It was thick. Thicker than washing up liquid. <clears throat> like, um, it was almost like treacle, this stuff. And I thought, wow, <laughs> five pound a bowl. Five quid. Anyway, I put it back on the shelf and I thought, let's have another sniff. And I bought it. I bought that one. I think it was eucalyptus and lemon or eucalyptus and jasmine. I'll try and remember it for the next show. Lovely smell. So I put that in my bag and I came home. Uh, had a little bit of sleep. Got up. I, I did my cooking. Made my spaghetti arabetta sauce. Then my mate came round. Uh, watched a little bit of telly. We watched Holby. I like Holby. Um... Had some strawberries, and then uh, I, I thought I'll try my new floor cleaner out. That was about 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> I'm mopping this floor at 11 o'clock at night. Now, I read the instructions. says only one cap full, five litres of water. So I've got my mop bucket out thing. I'll put, the, I'll put, I'll put a cap full in there. Um, and uh, I started mopping the floor. My God, the soap suds. You've never seen so many soap suds on the floor. I said to my mum, mate, was still I said, oh, I've got too many suds here. He said, oh, you haven't put enough water in or, or you've put too much in. I said, well, I only put a cap full in. He said, well, how much water you got in there? I said, well, I've got enough. He said, you haven't got enough water in there. So what I had to do was mop that as it was. It was, it was covered in soap suds, this floor. But then I tipped it away. And then, of course, I flushed the toilet because I always tip the water out of the toilet, and all the bubbles came up. Oh, no, it's all good. It's a little, a little bit like a washing machine. Did you ever go to a laundrette and put too much washing powder in? And the powder starts coming out the top of the machine. <laughs> did you? I mean, you must have done that, did you? Oh, no, we've always had a washing machine. Well, we, need, we didn't have a washing machine. When we were a child, we used to go down the laundrette, and there'd always be one or two washing machines where someone had put too much powder in, and it'd be pouring out the top all these bubbles. 
<laughs> well, that nearly happened to my toilet tonight, which is a good job after my mate had used it. Oh, God. Dreadful. I tell him not to use my toilet. Why can't he hold it till he gets home? Ghastly people using my toilet. Um, so I tipped that away and I got a bucket of uh, just water I, and, 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 and then the, the soap come up. Really clean floor. Lovely smell. Eucalyptus. Do you like that? Eucalyptus. So I've done that. My mate went home and here I am now chatting to you for a little while. OK, uh, let's have a look. Paris says some people can be cruel. If I was you, keep them somewhere safe and inside from danger. What, my butterflies? Yeah, I don't like those. I really like these. I could put them on my back wall outside, actually, on my back wall. And no one would be able to get to them there, you know. But it just seems a shame that no one else would see such such lovely things, doesn't it, you know? Oh, I don't know. I'll think of something to do with them. Good. All right, no one want to call in tonight? Then 0 uh, if you want to chit-chat to us today. Now, talking of tea machines, talking of tea and tea machines, we've got, please write right to your local waitrose and insist that they put a proper tea machine in one that gurgles and bubbles and boils water properly. Is it 20 past one in the morning already? How long have I been chatting for? 45 minutes. Don't it go quick? Goes well. It does for me anyway. <laughs> Probably most of the people have gone to sleep by now, have they? Who was it? Who was it? Who took us to bed on his mobile phone today? He'd be fast asleep there. Look at this. The nation's love affair with the traditional cuppa has been dealt another blow after Tesco announced it was scrapping 16 old-fashioned teas for trendy herbal alternatives. Has Have you had herbal tea? Well, I mean, it's tasteless. How can anyone enjoy herbal tea? It's absolutely... You don't even put milk, milk in it, do you? I don't know how they got the audacity to call some sort of raspberry powder, you know, herbal tea. It's not tea, is it? Tea is black. The UK's biggest supermarket will clear its shelves of some packets of black tea, the kind that goes with milk and sugar, by household names, PG Tips and Thai Foo. A sales decline. I can't believe this. What is wrong with you all? How can you not enjoy a nice cup of tea? Among the dizzy listings are PG Tips 100 gram packs of English breakfast and Earl Grey tea. Uh, Earl Grey tea bags. Mind you, I've never liked that Earl Grey tea. Oh, it's just like drinking a cup full of blooming perfume, isn't it? Oh, it's horrible, that stuff. Um, in their place will be 33 fashionable infusions by the lesser-known brands Pucker and Pure Leaf, including green and fruit teas and even a special one for pregnant women. What, pregnant women need a special type of tea? Well, that's the first I've heard for that. Is that right? Why can't you just drink normal tea like the rest of us? Tea sales fell 5% last year, with black tea share dropping from 76 to 71% of total sales. Uh, the Grocer magazine that Tesco's decision appeals to younger shoppers. Who are, well, it's OK, don't go there. Don't go to Tesco's. You see, they're trying to destroy our way of life. How can anyone survive without having a cup of tea first thing in the morning? That's what I want to know. Would we just lean over for, oh, I'll just have a cup of that raspberry infusion today. What are you? Do me a favour, will you? Dear me, strawberry infusions. Oh, it's vile, this. Have, it, I have tried it. Yes, I have. Don't say that. Oh, if you tried it, you'd like it. I have. I didn't. Like Chinese food, dear. I've tried that. Oh, my God. Horrible stuff. How can you sit there eating Chinese food? Oh, it's vile. I had it once. I was so sick. Honestly, I really was. Those little prawn pork. Oh, nothing wrong with a nice carrot and a pea, dear. <laughs> I'm so unadventurous where it comes to food. I won't go out to a restaurant, you know. <clears throat> I rarely go out to a restaurant. You sit there with that menu. It's all in foreign as well, isn't it? They can't. Even... Oh, what's that? They can't even do it in English. <laughs> the menus in some of these places. 
That's, that's how bad it's got. Even the people in the restaurants can't even write in English. It's in blooming French or Italian or something like that. What's all that about? Lee says, Waitrose Gold or Ridgeway's English breakfast for me. Yes, Lee, I have the Waitrose Gold blend. That's my one as well. Hello to the lovely Angela Washington. I'll send you some Lipton's. No, no, thank you, Angela. I've had Lipton's tea. It is as weak as anything. Oh, that's horrible, that stuff, Angela. Send me your address, Angela, and, and, and privately, in a private message, and I will send you a... Oh, would that get through the customs? If I sent you in, uh, Waitrose Gold Blend tea bags. I will. If you send me your address, Angela, I will send you a box, a small box, a small box of Waitrose Gold Blend tea bags. And once you've had one of those, you'll be begging me to bring bring over a, a suitcase full of them. <laughs> that is proper. That is proper. Paris says we can't be friends. How dare you not like Chinese food? No, I don't. It's horrible. Horrible stuff. Oh, and those noodles and things. No, 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 no. I, there was a point where I wouldn't eat anything that was spicy at all, but um, uh, I do uh, I do add quite a lot of spice you now to the stuff I cook. Um, cook what was in, in my thing today? Cumin and there was something else in it today. Uh, I can't remember the other spice. There were two two main spices in that food. Cumin was one of them. Can't remember what the other one was now. Can't remember. <laughs> Customs will steal it and smoke it. They probably will. Do they actually stop the stuff coming or do they have a quick look and then let it through? How does that work with customs? I have sent stuff to people before which just hasn't got there. You know, and when you, cost a, once you've spent the money on the stuff, it's rather annoying when it doesn't get through, isn't it? Uh, gardening news. My garden's bursting into a... Flower really, really doing very well at the moment. I've just ordered another load of plants, and I, God, I keep buying plants. I've got no more room, but I've discovered my front garden. I've got a little bit of grass there, which kind of goes like that. I've got a couple of long, what are they called? Um, <clears throat> long, like window boxes. Yeah, they're quite long, like that. And I thought, well, I can put those there if I build that up so it's flat. Or, or take that bit out so it's flat. I can put them there and that's another lo another row of plants I can do there. Look at this lady here. Um, this was in yesterday's Daily Mail. For years, the lowly plant lurked unnoticed in the corner of Julia Hardy's front garden. And then without warning, it started to grow and grow and grow. Now this rare specimen has flowered into life and shot up 30 foot in a matter of weeks. Look at that plant. Look at that. It's outside her front. It was, it was, it suddenly shot up 30 foot. Isn't that great? Have something like that. Um, the plant is the agar, agave, agave americana. It's native to the deserts of Mexico, Texas and Arizona, a far cry from Devon. <laughs> She's got it in Devon. It's also known as the century plant because it can remain dormant for decades before rapidly flowering into life and then dying soon after. Blooms in the UK are very, very rare. There's only been a handful in the last 20 years. So look at that. I mean, 30 foot. Can you imagine that suddenly appearing in front of you outside? That'd be great, wouldn't it, eh? That'd be great. Good. Uh, one more story I've got for you today, then. Oh, uh, I did pop into the vets today as well to collect uh, my cat's ashes. Uh, you know she died um, uh, Monday before last, uh, but that's not ready. They, they told me they will. Uh, she'll be back on Friday. Apparently, she'll be back on Friday. My little cat, bless her. One more story then, and it's all very worrying. Now I had one of these fly into. I, it has to be one of these. It flew into my kitchen um, last summer. If you've been with the show a long time, you'll remember this story. And I was just doing some stuff in the kitchen. I had both doors open. And this massive, I mean, it, it looked like a wasp. It was massive. This thing flew into my kitchen and it was big. It was big and it was slow. It was like a slow fly, almost like it was floating. Zzz, like that it was. And it had a come in the kitchen. It had a good look around. 
It ignored me, I'm very pleased to say. I was terrified of this thing. Massive. It flew, it had a look around, and then it went back out the door again. Very, very strange. Maybe it was, look maybe it was looking for somewhere to make a nest in my house. Well, in this morning's Daily Mail, it says, a swarm of hundreds of thousands of vicious Asian hornets will colonise the UK in two decades without action, scientists have warned. Now, I have seen stories about these Asian hornets. Uh, I didn't really take any notice of them, really, until that, that one flew in. Uh, it, it had to be... It, it had to be at least an inch long, this thing. I mean, it was ugly. Ugly. <laughs> the hornets, which grow up to two inches long... Oh, just a minute. Oh, I thought I'd done that already. Here we go. Um, the hornets, which grow up to two inches long... Uh, will colonise, sorry, where are we, and have a three-inch wingspan, are an aggressive predator of honeybees and other pollinating insects. If left to thrive in the UK, the species will put a critical strain on British populations of honeybees and other insects vital to the British ecosystem, scientists said. The likely invasion of Asian hornets in the UK could be halted if beekeepers and the general public, especially in the southwest, are vigilant and able to identify them. Um, we need members of the public and beekeepers to familiar themselves with this hornet. Look out for signs of foraging hornets, particularly near honeybee colonies, and check the tallest trees for their large nests. Rapid reporting could make all the difference between eradication and widespread attachment. And we, do, we don't want these things. I mean, I'm, oh, they're ugly. I mean, I, I, you can't see, but they're ugly. Great big things. We don't want these things flying around while we're trying to eat our jam sandwiches. Thank you very much. Do we now? Huh? Dangerous. I bet they've got a sting and a half on them and all. Dear me. All right. Um, good morning to Emily. Hello, Emily, who says, I know I've seen Waitrose gold tea in British stockists online that ships international ships five ninety five or six US dollars. Oh well that's not bad if you probably cheaper for you to buy them at that end then. So not sure what would be for you, but it might not be that bad. Those of us across the pond who are serious about tea deserve to have quality choices. Yes you do. You do. You need them, Emily. You need the Waitrose gold tea tea bags. I'm happy to sell Angela to, to send Free of charge, Angela, a packet of Waitrose gold leaf tea bags. Yes, indeed. Paris says there was a massive moth what came in my kitchen and sitting room. Mum still thinks it's a bat. <laughs> you go to some other countries, uh, Paris. I mean, I, I, I've never been to like Africa, but the insects there are like birds. <clears throat> they are that big. We're not keen on it. Some people, eat, they eat insects, don't they? On sticks and things like that. Oh, it's not my cup of tea. Really not my cup of tea. All right, let's let's um, let's do today's birthdays. I'll do today's birthdays and uh, yesterday's birthdays. Oh, hang on a minute. Let's, uh, Gary. Hello, Gary. Ah, uh, Glenn, uh, yes, Glenn Campbell died tonight as well. I don't know if you heard that news. Um, great singer. He did uh, Rhinestone Cowboy, which is probably the most favourite one. You know, I'm a rhinestone cowboy. I think it was 80, 80, 80 odd, early 80s, something like that. Which I don't think that's that's getting into old age now, isn't it? Would you class 80 as old now or is that like getting into old age? I don't know really, but Glenn Campbell. So we've lost a, another great star tonight, unfortunately. That's a shame, isn't it? Right, today's birthday is uh, Happy birthday today to Peter McKay, 52 years old. Today, happy birthday, Peter. All right. Uh, Patricia K. Taylor, happy birthday to you. Simon Paul Clark is 33 years old today. You don't look 33, Simon. Happy birthday, sir. Uh, Mike Quinn, happy birthday to Mike Quinn. Christopher Jervis, 58 years old today. Happy birthday, Chris. Uh, and Tony Flynn, hello, 33 today. Happy birthday, Tony. It's a long, long time since I've seen you, hasn't it? Uh, I had left the two brewers a few weeks ago. That's the last place I think I saw you. I do uh, yesterday's birthdays as well because we weren't here on um, on Tuesday, were we? So happy birthday on Tuesday for 
Louise Harvey. Happy birthday, Louise. To Katie Panel, my cousin's daughter. Now, what does that make her to me? My cousin's... So, my cousin first removed? I don't know. But happy birthday, Katie. She's the most beautiful girl you've ever come across, Katie. Beautiful. I think you might be 20, 19, 20, 21, somewhere around there. Happy birthday, Katie. And say hello to your dad for me, all right? Happy birthday today to Jonathan George. And happy birthday to Nick Driver. They're all the birthdays today. Let's uh, uh, sing the song for you. If I can find the music. There it is. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Right. Okay, so it's Wednesday. Um, oh, hang on a minute. Mark, 81. Okay, so, um, yeah, Glenn Campbell was 81. So I don't think that's old, is it? 81 now. I don't think 81's old. It's probably getting into old age, 81. Old, I think, now is like 90, 95, isn't it? Eh? I hope you'll make it as well. I hope I make it, to be honest. I've been booked to do 200 years of this show yet. You know, I can't go yet. <laughs> That's it today then, gang. Uh, being Wednesday, I'm hosting a quiz tonight. If you're in the North London area, uh, every Wednesday night is quiz night at the King's Head Theatre Bar. That's in Upper Street, Islington, starts at 8.30 and finishes at uh, 10.30, all right? Um, the prize is a £30 bar tab. That's the top prize. Second prize is usually either a bottle of wine or six bottles of beer. So that's 8.30 to 10.30 every Wednesday night. So that's the night at the King's Head Theatre Bar in Upper Street, Islington. Good idea to book a table in advance. Check out the phone number. I haven't got the phone number with you. Uh, with me, unfortunately, you just get the phone number off the internet, give them a ring and book yourselves a table. Get there about 8 o'clock for 8.30. Uh, have a nice Wednesday and I'll see you again very soon. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Cheerio now.